Hi everyone, my name is Gráinne Kniff and I am a Principal Scientist with the Indoor Air Innovation and Research, the iAir Institute. And our mission is to make the United Nations human right to breathe clean air a reality. In this presentation, we have summarised findings related to six air cleaning technologies, understanding their underlying mechanisms of action and exploring ongoing considerations. So to start, we are aware of the challenge and negative health effects which can occur from spending up to 90% of our time indoors in polluted environments, often two to five times more polluted than outdoors. And there are many factors which can contribute to our indoor air quality. Of course, this is particularly important for people with asthma and allergies. So we have particulate matter, volatile organic compounds or VOCs, and biological contaminants can all trigger or exacerbate respiratory and cardiovascular diseases. As medical professionals, it's crucial to advise patients on the best way to address these issues. Strategies such as source control and ventilation are crucial, but as we consider all the various sources of physical, chemical and biological pollutants found in the different rooms around our homes, we can appreciate that there is an important role for air cleaning technologies to play in improving our indoor environments. So in particular, we would encourage advising patients to choose third-party tested devices which are performance validated and ideally certified to the relevant standards. In this quick overview, I'll mention six air cleaning technologies to be aware of with some pointers and I'll finish with some take home messages. So HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Arrestance and HEPA filters are a very popular choice for air purification. They consist of a fine fiber mesh which mechanically captures particles as small as 0.3 microns. So when recommending HEPA filters, it's important to ensure they are true HEPA filters rather than HEPA-like or HEPA-type. And to remember that the filters need to be changed regularly to maintain effectiveness. HEPA filters are often combined with other layers, including activated carbon filters. So activated carbon filters excel at absorbing odours, gases and volatile organic compounds from the air. There is a high surface area of the porous carbon material which comes into contact with the pollutants and adsorbs them to clean the air. This technology is particularly useful for homes with cigarette smoke and issues with odours from pets and cooking, for example. Photocatalytic oxidation, or PCO, harnesses UV light and a catalyst such as titanium dioxide to break down pollutants. PCO is not a filtering technology and it doesn't trap particles, so it is sometimes coupled with other filtering technologies. While it can be very effective in eliminating biological contaminants, some devices may produce ozone and other harmful byproducts. However, there is still a lot of ongoing research in this area to further develop the potential of this approach to air purification. UV-based technology is a powerful disinfection method. UVGI stands for ultraviolet germicidal irradiation. It deactivates microorganisms like bacteria and viruses by disrupting their DNA and RNA structure. Ensure that the UV light is contained within a device to prevent any harmful exposure. And UV systems are particularly used within HVAC systems, air ducts and ha air handling units currently. Electrostatic precipitation uses an ionizing section to charge airborne particles and then collection plates to attract and capture these particles. Advise patients to clean the plates regularly and to be mindful of ozone emissions by choosing certified devices. Finally, onto plasma ionizing technology. Ionization introduces charged ions into the air, which cause airborne particles to agglomerate or cluster together. This technology may also produce ozone and other harmful byproducts. Recommending certified low ozone emission systems is crucial. So this technology is also undergoing a lot of research and development work currently. And in conclusion, as medical professionals, you play a vital role in helping patients achieve better indoor air quality. Here are some key take home messages to guide your recommendations. Air cleaners can play an important role along with source control and adequate ventilation. So encourage patients to use validated air quality monitors and sensors to understand their indoor environment needs. Some final advice is to consider the noise of the device, the cost, energy use, the maintenance requirements, their room sizes and occupancy levels within the home, and recommend independently tested and validated devices to ensure safety and function. Thank you.